Mark Cavendish will not get his 35th stage victory at this year's Tour de France. I repeat, Mark Cavendish will not get his 35th stage victory at the Tour de France. I know, I'm sorry to the members in the community, to the members of the community um, that live in the UK. I know you probably are cursing at the screen at me right now, but hear me out. We'll get to why I believe that in a second. We are starting what you're seeing on the screen right now. We're starting with the Tour of Columbia. Uh, Mark Cavendish, most recent victory. As you guys know, uh, we like to go over race analysis, a little bit of race breakdown so that you guys can improve when you are racing. And I'll just let it play out this first time here. For those who have not seen the finish, this was just a few days ago. So pretty recent. Mark Cavendish, first victory of the year, early in the year, which is very important for the confidence. And we're going to run it back so we can break down what happened. Good thing is Mark now has a lead out train. I believe that's Lutsenko at the front, uh, Michael Morkov, and then Cesc Bowl behind him, and then Mark Cavendish. So he's got about three guys um, that he can hide behind until the very last minute we see Morkov does a pretty quick pull here. I would like to see him a little closer to the barriers, but maybe he is avoiding that because the feet of the barriers are poking out. Who knows? Uh, but they have time to tighten up this lead out train. Good thing for Mark. Cesc Bowl here. Last lead out man for him. Good thing for Mark. He only had Cesc Bowl last year. Now he has two other guys. We see Mark look over to his right. He's the right to go. He shoots the gap here. As the smart sprinter as he is, he needs to jump. You can see a little cheeky move that he does against Gaviria. Pretty dangerous, unnecessary in my opinion. What do you guys think about that? Um, but it's enough to make Gaviria think for a quick second, which gives uh, Mark Cavendish the edge that he needs to, to finish. And believe it or not, Fernando Gaviria has beaten Mark Cavendish uh, 20 times. He has 21st place victories to Mark Cavendish's five in their head-to-head -head competitions when, in the, when they're in the same race. And Gaviria actually won stage one of this race. So maybe that's why Mark felt it was necessary to do a little uh, savvy move there. Not sure. You guys let me know how you feel about that in the in the comment section. Good thing for Mark is Gaviria is not going to be at the tour. He's not slated to be there yet. That could change still early. Uh, but if he's not there, that is one less um, sprinter that he needs to or formidable sprinter that he needs to compete against let's get into why i think mark cavendish isn't going to get his 35th victory at the tour de france i believe mark cavendish is trending in the wrong direction this was his first win since the giro of 2023 and he had five wins in 2022 and last year in 2023 that giro win was his lone win of the season now, say what you want. Um, he didn't have a lead out, what have you. Um, but that victory at the Giro d'Italia was against, I would say, B and C level sprint talent. No knock on Cav, he still won. But for me, it wasn't really against the top talent. So um, I think he's trending in, the right, uh, trending in the wrong direction. Now, what may change my opinion on whether or not I believe he will get the 35th victory at the Tour de France is how he does at the upcoming UAE Tour. UAE Tour, I know you guys are probably thinking, why would we watch that? But I think it's something you need to mark on your calendars because at that tour, there's going to be Dylan Groenewegen, Olive Kuj, um, on from Jumbo Visma, good young sprinter. Fabio Jakobsen is going to be there. Tim Merlier is going to be there. And Mark Cavendish isn't even listed as a top competitor, uh, which in my opinion, I think is either disrespectful or completely accurate depiction of where Mark Cavendish currently is in his career. Let me know what you guys think there. But if Cav does well, this is a great early season test for Mark Cavendish in his lead out train. If Mark Cavendish does well at the UAE Tour, I think that gives him a huge increase in confidence uh, going into the Tour de France. Now, even if he does well at the UAE Tour, it may not matter, guys, because we all saw what Jasper Philipson did last year. <laughs> Jasper was undoubtedly the best sprinter in last year's Tour de France. And we also need to ask ourselves, is Michael Morkov at the age of 38 a better lead out man than Matthew Vanderpool? I would say no. 
The second thing we need to ask is, does Mark Cavendish at this point in his career have enough pop to come around Jasper Philipson? I would say no, based on what we've seen so far. And one thing I was thinking, guys, is does this 35th victory even matter? Does it matter for Mark Cavendish? I don't believe it does. I don't believe if Mark Cavendish gets the 35th stage victory at the Tour de France that he is seeking, I don't think it does much for his career. I think the guy has 163 victories in his career. I think it will definitely solidify his legacy at the Tour de France, but overall, I don't think a 35th stage victory does much for Mark Cavendish's legacy in the sport. I think he's regarded as probably the best sprinter ever. But let me know what you guys think. If you disagree, if you think that he needs this to solidify his career. Um, but I just wanted to go over this really quickly and share with you why I do not think Mark Cavendish is going to get his 35th victory. And I look forward to reading your comments.